It's December, Ireland is finally out of lockdown, the cinemas are back open. On my way to the press preview of Kieran Cassidy's The Razor. Well, if you had any faith in the integrity of elite modern cycling, or indeed any elite modern sports, then Kieran Cassidy's The Racer is certain to cure you of that. In 1998, Ireland was given the gift of three stages, the first three stages of the Tour de France, and that proved to be a bit of a poison chalice in that it was the year when the sick, dishonest and unhealthy nature of elite cycling was exposed. The Racer is directed by Kieran Walsh, and written by Kieran Cassidy, who directed the documentary Jihad Jane last year in 2019, a documentary covering the events which led to an Islamic terror cell ending up in Waterford in Ireland. The Racer is a new Irish film, which is a fictionalized account of real events in 1998. This is an international production with an international cast and not many Irish actors, which in some ways suits the nature in which this tour was transplanted into Ireland. All the more special then to see the inspired choice of Tara Lee, who plays the Doctor. She plays alongside Louis Taub, the main protagonist, Dom Chabol, or Dom the Domestique, who is the support writer on the team. Tara delivers the standout line of the film, which in some ways could be its title. You're a loser. Professional loser. Tara's subtle acting complements some of the louder aspects and over-the-top aspects when the team are pranking and fighting like a dysfunctional family on Christmas Day. A subtle smile as the lift closes conveys her conflict in her affection for Dom and her disgust for his compliance with the sick regime which is killing him. The larger-than-life Sonny looks after the team in his own unique way. If you don't take it, you won't win. Now give me, give me, give me. While the team are carb loading with pasta, and eating healthily, Sonny appears to be constantly chain smoking and ordering cheeseburgers. Viking is the fiery, humorless manager of the team who Don is relying on for the renewal of his contract. I need to know about next year, my contract. You're nearly 39 years old. What do you want me to say? Something I feel very strongly about is the corruption of elite sports, in particular in relation to drug abuse. And I think it's something that undermines the entire nature of sport itself. Sport, by its nature, should be about improving your health, your fitness, and your well-being. And when that, the line crosses where it's all about winning, and to the extent that people are willing to sacrifice their health and fitness and well-being in order to get that medal or get that prize, it undermines the entire nature of sport itself. And I think it's something that's corrupted from the very top level, but sadly all the way down to the lower levels, when children start playing sports, and that need to win at all costs starts at the very early ages, sadly. And it's rare to find coaches who are willing to put that aside and actually put the children's best interests at heart. And quite often the opposite is the case. The coaches are putting their own best interests at heart by insisting on winning at all costs. And really children don't want that, from my experience. What they want is to enjoy themselves and enjoy the, the nature of sport. And really, the only one who benefits truly from the winning is the coach itself. So it's the coach's desire to look good themselves rather than having the best interests of those children. In this context, Kieran Cassidy's film covers how the Tour de France came to Ireland and that would have showcased the sport at the highest level to our children and to everybody in the country as something to aspire to. And sadly, the opposite is the case here. Nobody in their right mind would want to aspire to the type of corruption of everything, the integrity of sport and also their health and fitness to the point of doping to this level, to the point where the main protagonist is at the point of death really due to heart failure. Dom wakes up in the night, he has a heart rate monitor on because his heart rate goes so low due to his doping and the heart rate, rate monitor triggers him to basically prevent him from dying and uh, and alarms and, and wakes him up so that he can go on to his exercise bike and raise, raise his heart rate again. Otherwise, he'd die. 
to star in this is Tara Lee and there's a standout performance from her in it and she provides the moral base in this film and the perspective of somebody who sees it as what it is from the outside. Internally the team accept the doping and this credibly perverse behaviour as normal but Tara Lee provides a sort of a window of, of a moral perspective where she is the doctor and she sees the health damage that's being done mentally and physically to Dom in this process. Why risk your life like that? Everybody doesn't. You're not even like win. The film delves deep into the politics of professional cycling in which the main character, Tartari, is supposed to win each, each race and Dom the domestique is merely the pack horse who does the heavy lifting in advance of the race being won. Dom is going to be riding in the Tour de France on Saturday. Are you going to win? No, I'm a support rider. I use my energy for the lead rider to win. Don't you ever want to win yourself? Of course. But that's a dream. The film works well to showcase the beautiful Irish scenery as well, both the urban in in the case of Dublin, the Pepper Can Lower Mount Street leading up to the Pepper Canister is a beautiful shot of George and Dublin. And also when they go to the Wicklow Gap, there's some beautiful scenery there of waterfalls and the barren scenery, which is only about half, half an hour from Dublin. The film tries its best to portray 1998 Dublin also with the, the quaint coin operated uh, telephone boxes where you're pressing button A and pressing button B. Perhaps disappointingly, they portray 1998 Dublin very in a contrived way by focusing purely on boys on. And one would have thought they could, there were better bands around at the time that people were listening to. Something happens, roller skate skinny. The overuse of boys on is perhaps disappointing here. The dream sequences can sometimes be a bit flaky and contrived. Overall, this is a very enjoyable film, which is accessible to everybody regardless of your interest in sports or cycling and where the main themes are the corrupt and sick nature of elite professional sports. This year has been an absolute bloodbath for film everywhere including Irish film so one would hope that the racer can get a decent box office when it opens on Friday December 11th and cinemas are back open and accessible to everyone once again. In 2020 we certainly need a means to escape and you could do worse than spending an hour and a half in a dark room in the cinema watching The Racer. Enjoy. Three, two, one.